Kim, the tower touches all the mantles of heaven, brother novitiates, and by its apex one can be as he will. More, be as he was, and yet changed for all else on that path for those that walk after. This is the third key of Numantia, and the secret of how mortals become makers, and makers back to mortals. The bones of the wheel need their flesh, and that is mankind's heirloom. Kim. Those who know it can reshape the land. Starlight is your mantle, brother. Wear it to see by and add its light to paradise. These are excerpts from Volume 3 of Commentaries on the Mysterium Xerxes, also known as the Mythic Dawn Commentaries, written by Mankar Cameron in the game Oblivion. Welcome to the Elder Audio Scrolls podcast. I am your host, Mike, but not the liar, a different Mike. I am by day a musician, but here I will be your storyteller, giving voice to the texts found within the world of Tamriel. I consider myself a novice journeyer in the Elder Scrolls universe. Having unsuccessfully attempted to immerse myself in the games in the past, I have recently re-entered this world, putting a greater emphasis on immersion in the lore. This approach has been very successful, and I have found myself devouring the texts within the games as I discover them. In tandem with playing Skyrim and beginning to play The Elder Scrolls Online, I began listening to the excellent Elder Lore podcast, which I can't recommend enough, and for which I will put a link in the description. As someone who has a busy personal and professional life, this podcast helped my immersion in Tamriel immensely, as I could listen to it on the go, and it would enrich the relatively short amounts of time I could actually spend playing the games. The podcast has been inactive for quite some time now, but all the information contained in it is still very relevant to anyone playing an Elder Scrolls game. Since hearing that podcast, the idea came to me that it might be interesting and beneficial to others who love the lore of Tamriel to begin to create a narrated version of the texts found within the Elder Scrolls games, audiobooks of a sort, or audio scrolls, if you will. This podcast will be my attempt to generate such a library. The sheer amount of text contained within these games is staggering. I should start by giving a huge shout out to the folks at the Imperial Library, again, link in the description, which is an online database of all the texts in the games. Without their free archive and organizational system, this podcast would be much more difficult, and I will be relying heavily on their repository of text as well as the librarian comments to inform the readings. I will do my best to pick the best versions of each text, and will point out differences between various versions of the text in different games when I see fit. As a general reminder, just in case his name comes up, Michael Kirkbride is a former designer for Bethesda, who is behind quite a bit of the lore that we will cover. I thought for quite a while about attempting to organize the podcast in seasons or volumes dealing with specific topics or going in some sort of chronological order. However, due to the huge breadth of authors, narrative styles, and origins of the texts, this would be incredibly time-consuming to do. For now, I will begin with some of the more significant texts that provide a backdrop and context for others, and I will proceed through more texts as I see fit not necessarily in any given order. Perhaps in future I can create a place to organize the archive in some coherent manner, and I welcome audience suggestions and participation, but more on that later. I want to give a brief overview of how I am planning to conduct the episodes of the podcast, with the slight caveat that this could change as I learn through the process. My plan is to treat this mainly as an audio archive of the texts, with relatively little to no commentary from myself. As such, this podcast will be most comprehensible to those who are already at least somewhat familiar with Tamriel and the Elder Scrolls games. I will begin each episode with a short overview including the name of the text 
a one-sentence summary of the topic if necessary, which game or games it appears in, and the author and when it was written, if known. If you find yourself lost or confused on a particular topic, I do suggest heading over to the Elder Lore podcast or our handy friend Google to try to answer your questions. One of the things I love the most about the lore in the Elder Scrolls games is that it is written from the perspective of in-game characters. Due to the huge variety of cultures, eras, and political allegiances that can be the source of these perspectives, the lore is multifaceted and subjective, meaning that each of us who approaches these texts must decide for ourselves if what they say is even true, and how to interpret them. I will try to keep my preamble about the source and author of the texts as brief as possible, but when I include some information about them, it is only to provide some context for those who already know a thing or two about the world and politics of Tamriel. My hope is that this will enrich your own interpretation of the text. Following the end of the text, I may provide some brief commentary on it. I cannot promise in general that this podcast will be spoiler-free, but this commentary section is the area most likely to contain spoilers, as I will provide some of my own thoughts on the text in relation to my own knowledge of the world of Tamriel and the events in the games. If you are only interested in hearing the texts themselves, this section should be skipped so you can move on to the next audio scroll. This commentary section will not take the form of a full exegesis of the text and its meaning, but it will serve two purposes. First, I will use it as a space to provide any brief notes on significant things in the text that I think could be interesting to other fans of the Elder Scrolls universe and might help draw connections to other events or lore. Secondly, and probably more importantly, I will use it as a space to posit questions I have about the texts, questions which I hope will spark further discussion among the broader community of players. As I said, I consider myself to be still very much a novice when it comes to the lore of Tamriel and the Elder Scrolls, and I would really appreciate any and all potential answers to my questions. This leads me to my request for feedback and suggestions. I want to provide the content that other lore seekers within Tamriel want to hear, so if you have suggestions and ideas for upcoming texts that I should narrate, please send them to me. I am also sure I will make mistakes from time to time, and I heartily welcome all corrections and criticism which might help me improve this podcast. Pronunciation is going to be a challenge, since, as far as I know, there aren't very clear rules written down anywhere for the languages of Tamriel. For now, I will go off of what I have heard in the games, what I have heard from other podcasts involving lore, and adjust as I receive feedback. I know there are also some disagreements about how to pronounce words, so I will do my best to get things right when I can. All suggestions, corrections, and general thoughts on the podcast and the episodes can be directed to elderaudioscrolls at gmail.com. The music in this podcast is all written by Jeremy Soule and Brad Derrick. I want to end this introduction with a curious text concerning the namesake of the games, the Elder Scrolls themselves, and the enigmatic moth priests who curate and have the ability to read them. The text appears in Skyrim, as well as the Elder Scrolls Online. So without further ado, here is our text for today. An Accounting of the Elder Scrolls by Quintus Nerevalus, former Imperial Librarian. After the supposed theft of an Elder Scroll from our Imperial Library, I endeavored to find any sort of index or catalog of the scrolls in our possession so that such situations may be avoided, or at least properly verified, in the future. To my dismay, I discovered that the moth priests are notoriously inexact when it comes to the actual physical manifestations of the scrolls, and had no idea how many they held, or how they were organized. Merely asking the question evoked chuckles, as if a child was asking why dogs cannot talk. I will confess, my jealousy of the ones who can read the scrolls grows, but I am not yet willing to sacrifice my sight to alleged knowledge. The older moth priests I attempt to engage in conversation seem as batty as any other elder who has lost their mind, so I fail to see what wisdom is imparted from the reading. In any case, I set out to create my own index of the Elder Scrolls in cooperation with the monks. Day by day we went through the tower halls with them telling me the general nature of each Elder Scroll so that I might record its location. 
always careful never to glimpse the writings myself. I had only their word to go on. I meticulously drew out a map of the chambers, where scrolls relating to various specific prophecies were located, where particular periods of history were housed. In all, it took nearly a year of plotting, but at last I had rough notes on the entirety of the library to begin my collation. It was here that things began to go amiss. In studying my notes, I found many areas of overlap and outright contradiction. In some cases, different monks would claim the same scroll to be at opposite ends of the tower. I know they have no taste for jesting, or else I would suspect I was being made the fool in some game of theirs. I spoke to one of the older monks to relate my concerns, and he hung his head in sorrow for my wasted time. Did I not tell you, he coughed, when you started this, that all efforts would be futile? The scrolls do not exist in countable form. I had thought you meant there were too many to be counted. There are, but that is not the least of their complexities. Turn to the repository behind you and tell me how many scrolls are locked therein. I ran my fingers over the metal casings, tallying each rounded edge that they encountered. I turned back. Fourteen, I said. Hand me the eighth one, he said, reaching out his hand. I guided the cylinder into his palm, and he gave a slight nod to acknowledge it. Now, count again. Humoring him, I again passed my hands over the scrolls, but could not believe what I was feeling. Now, now there are eighteen, I gasped. The old monk chuckled, his cheeks pushing up his blindfold until it folded over itself. And in fact, he said, there always were. It was then that I enrolled as the oldest novice ever accepted into the cult of the Ancestor Moth. <laughs>